Good morning, people. I have a client with a PDF brochure for their products that has a weird looking header like this, where we've got a rectangular in the background, uh, got another rectangle sitting on top of it, um, centered on top of it with some angled edges uh, and then some content in it. And it's got a bit of a background image uh, in that centered section. And they're asking if we could do this on their website. So I want to show you what I've actually um, presented to them and how it's created. It's actually pretty damn simple. So it's not as difficult as it looks. I just want to show you how that's done. All right, guys, so we're going to start with a blank editor. I'm going to show you two ways of doing this, one using Flex and the other using Grid. And there's not a lot of difference in the implementation. So it's pretty simple to just create one and then convert it to the other. We're going to start with creating a simple section. Uh, now, I must highlight that I am using Advanced SEMA for a lot of productivity. So all these shortcuts you see down the right-hand side, left-hand side, etc., that's all Advanced SEMA. If you don't have these, um, then you just have to do things the normal way by using the Elements panel up here, etc. Uh, but we're going to use AT to keep things nice and quick. So I'm going to create inside my container a block. Inside that block, I'm going to create another block. Inside that block, I'm going to add a image. I'll explain this a little bit later. Text, uh, sorry, a heading, and then a text element. I'm just going to call that lead. Okay, I'm giving some name, which will be angled header. And we'll call that our inner. All right, there is our structure. So uh, I'm going to use BIM, so I, with AT I can right click on this angled header and just click on the class converter and create classes. And then all of my classes for all these elements is automatically created for me. Uh, if you don't have AT or uh, ACSS also has this feature, then you have to manually create those classes as you go. So here we go, we've got a structure, you know, our angled header. Uh, so at the top level here, I'm going to make sure our class is selected and give us a background of a dark color. I'm just going to use this uh, neutral dark. Uh, okay, so that's my neutral dark and on my inner. I'm just going to give it a color for the moment just so we can see what we're doing with it. Give it this color here, that'll do. Uh, we're going to go into our layout and we're going to set our maximum width to 75%. So it it's not updating, or oh, min width, sorry. Twenty five percent. All right, now that's these are automatically flex because we used blocks in bricks, which automatically flex. So to center that, we go to our parent, which is the angled header, uh, and just tell it to center or the cross axis or align the cross axis to put it in the center. And there it is in the center there. Now on our inner, we want to extend beyond the top and bottom of the parent box. Uh, and we want to put some angle on the sides. So let's extend it and, and uh, do that first. So in our style, uh, we're going to set some padding on it. Two rem. Two rem padding. Uh, we're going to go to lock, link the opposite sides on the margin. And we're going to put a minus one REM margin on it. That pushes it just above the top and the bottom of the parent. Uh, now we want to create an angled um, container, so a bit more of a polygon than a, um, a rectangle. So to do that, while we're on our inner, we're going to use some custom CSS. I'm going to use Clip Path. Okay, and we're going to use a polygon. With polygons, you do this in coordinate pairs. I'm going to start at the top left. So zero along the x-axis, zero along the y-axis. The comma to separate your coordinates and go to the other side, which is 100% along the x-axis, zero along the y-axis. And then we want to go to the bottom right, but we want this to be a little bit back along the x-axis. So let's say we're going to do 90% along the x-axis and then 100% along the y-axis. And that puts this point down here. So that's basically 10% from the end and 100% from along there. Then we're going to do the same on the left. But on the left, we want to go 
along the x-axis and 100% along the y-axis. And it gives us a clipped angle there where it's just too much. And to control it, we have to, if we want to change that, we have to change two values. So a better way of doing that is creating a variable. Let's call this offsets. I will make that say three rem start. I'm going to use the offset variable where we've got our 10%. Okay, and that's fixed this side here, less of an angle. We're going to copy this variable. And for the 90%, we're going to use a calc. And for the 90% one, we want it to be 100% along the x axis minus our variable for the offset. And that gives us our angles on both sides. And that's really easy to control. If I want that less of an angle, I can make that say 1.5. And we've got less of an angle there, which is pretty much like the demonstration that I did before. So that's it. That's controlling the uh, angles. Um, so basically, in summary, we've got a flex box uh, as a parent. We've got a flex box underneath that. We've set to a maximum of width of 75%, and it's centered in its parent container. Um, and then we use the clip path to clip the edges of the container to turn it into a polygon that's what we've done so far okay now we're going to go to the background and remove that background uh, because we're going to use the image as our background so here's our image here i'm just going to select that image from my library i'll use the same one i used in the demo that's the image there and oops we've done it again now with AT, see I've got this little uh, style level locking, that's an automatic theme feature, uh, and that prevents me from accidentally styling at the ID when I have a class. Because I always use BEM, I like having this on, so it reminds me I can't really change much here unless I select my class. So I've selected the class, and we want to set our object fit to cover because we're going to uh, squash this into the space, we don't want the image to distort. We want it to fit within the space, but not squash it. So we set our, our object fit to cover. I think that's all we need to do on that. Uh, and then on our, uh, actually we're gonna go to the parent first. Sorry, we're gonna set up the parent first. So we go to the inner container. Uh, and in our layout, we're gonna set our position to relative because we're gonna absolutely position the image inside that. It needs to be set to relative so it knows how to position that image. We're going to set our isolation to isolate. Isolation isolate means at this level, I am the absolute lowest Z index. Every other Z index from my children is on top of me. So even if I set one of these children to, you know, negative uh, one gazillion Z index, it still will be on top of that because that is the absolute zero, the absolute minimum Z index, so everything else sits on top of it. Okay, the reason we do that, I'll show you a little bit as we move through. But so we've got our isolation isolate and our position relative. So now on our image, we can now go to the uh, do the uh, positioning. We're going to set that to absolute. Uh, now I'm going to set the left, bottom, right, and top to zero. But because I'm using advanced SEMA, I have to go from the bottom up. And the reason is every time I type, I get this auto pick and it gets in the way so i go from the bottom up to set these okay i actually normally use a css rule uh, and a property inset rather than doing this but uh, doing it from the ui this is how you would do it i don't think there is an inset uh, option on here no there isn't okay so there it is there now you can see it's sitting on top of our text now okay even though it's lower in the dom uh it's actually sitting on top of the text because of the absolute positioning so we need to set a z negative z index so i'm going to put set that to minus one and now, even though the text is uh, dark, you can see it's now behind the text. Uh, but as I said, I can set that to one gazillion and it doesn't make any difference. It still sits on top of that inner because the inner's got a isolation of isolate. All right, so I just want to really highlight the reason you do that. All right, so while we're here, we're going to go back to our inner and we're going to add a overlay. So the gradient overlay as an overlay. I'm going to pick a color and we'll come back and play with this uh, a little bit later. Let's use, uh, use a black, 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 black. Uh, maybe just with a bit of transparency. So that'll do. 
there's some transparency here so we can just see the image in the background. Uh, actually, I might make it less so we can actually really see the image to play with it. Uh, so that's it. That with that's in the background. Uh, while we're here, why not set uh, some other properties? So we'll set our text so it centers in there. Uh, topography, we'll tell it to center the text. So when we get down to mobile breakpoints, the text isn't off to one side. Uh, so that's there. And maybe we'll set a color of that to this yellow color here. All right, so that's that done. Now, because we made the image a separate element, I can click on the image here, go to my CSS tab, and use the CSS filter, which will only affect the image, not the entire block. So what I want to do is remove all of my saturation, and I want to increase my contrast to the maximum. There it is there. And now, if I come back to my inner, go to my gradient overlay, uh, go to my one single color, uh, I can play with this now. So if I go right down to, uh, did I do the saturation or transparency? Transparency? Yeah, transparency is zero. You can see I've got a black and white high contrast image because of the CSS filter. All right. I can just play with this now and go, okay, I just want, I want lots of that showing through. It's interfering with my text. Or I can go, I just want this kind of be a barely visible, a uh, bit of a background and look like a reflection. Uh, whatever you want. So I'll leave it around about there so you can see more of it, but uh, um, but it's, uh, it's it's kind of dark. Right, so that's it there. And that is the heading done. Now, if I look at that now on the front end, there it is there. Look at it from its mobile responsiveness. It all works fine. Okay, so there's no problem with that. That's usable as it is. All right, now, so that is doing it with flex. Now, another way to do this is using grid. So I'm going to duplicate this entire section and use another one of the AT brilliant features. Now, I know Bricks have just introduced something here. I think it's this one here. Uh, I haven't even used it because I'm so used to using the AT one. I don't know how good, bad, or otherwise it is. Um, so um, I'm used to using AT for these features. Um, so we've got a uh, angled header here. Now these have the class of angled header on it. I want to make a variation on that. Advanced schema, just right click, go to my component class manager. You can see uh, they've got bulk actions. I can see I've only got these classes here, so I don't need to filter. If you've got more classes here that you don't want to include in your bulk actions, you need to type something here that's in the ones you want to filter them. We want to duplicate these classes and we look at the replacing everything that's got header to we're going to type it with header grid. So now everything that has the word header, we're going to have that renamed to header grid uh, for that second example. We want to remove the original elements from or the classes from the elements. So I'm going to hit yes. Uh, duplicate the classes, save the post, and close that. So here's our second set now. And if we look at these now, all of these now have the new name of header grid, uh, header grid inner, etc. So we've got a new set. Now we're going to turn this into a grid now. So instead of being flex, we're going to turn this into a grid. We're going to set our gap. Um, whatever your framework is, you'll probably use your own gap. I'm just going to say 20 is my gap. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to restrict this to a particular framework. So we're going to use repeat of. Uh, we do want 12, and we want to do min max 0, 1 fr. So that's just a standard way you would create a 12 column grid that is. Uh, flexible enough that each one of its columns can be zero um, or one FR, which has, whichever is the minimum. Okay, a maximum, I should say. All right, so now we've got a grid there. We have to tell it where to place this element on the grid. So because we've got a 12 column grid, we're going to start from the inner here. And now that it, now that's parent is a grid, Bricks gives us a nice little UI where it tells us uh, here what our grid column is. Grid row. So I'm going to just set our row to one. We don't have to because we only got the one row. And we're going to set this to a start at two and then go to 11. Okay. 
Now that's done that, but it doesn't look right. And the reason it doesn't look right is because we've got a max width set on our enter. So we'll get rid of that. So that's going from 2 to 11. That's not correct. So we're going to change that to go from 2 to 12. I forgot it is one base, not zero base. So uh, uh, when you have a, a 12 column grid, your last grid line is 13. That's 12. That's, um, yeah, so it starts at 1, 2, and then ends at 13. All right. So that's it. It's now a, uh, all we've done is changed it the, this to a grid. Uh, spacing, make it 12 column grid. Uh, on our inner, we said start from 2 and go to 12. And it works exactly the same. If I bring that up in the uh, front end here and have a look at it, you know, they both work. Right? So they both work fine. If you really wanted to, you could probably create a, a grid of rows as well and determine the, uh, you know, where the top and bottom sit on that grid. I don't think you need to. Uh, not for a simple header like this. So that is two ways of achieving the same result. Um, I love grid. I would probably go grid. And the reason for that is because I could have these grid lines line up with other content. With this, it's just a percentage of the width of that box. Uh, my go-to would probably be the second method. Then if I've got other like rows of uh, columns underneath this, my grid lines are going to uh, line up with these points here uh, if I use a 12 column grid. So uh, that's the way I would do it, but this is the easy way up the top here as well. All right, so guys, I hope that makes sense. Uh, if you like this, uh, hit the subscribe, hit the like. Thanks, guys.